I'm Bill Graziano and I live in Otisville, New York. I have been a teacher. I was a teacher for 40 years in a high school in Northern New Jersey, Pascack Valley High School. And I taught drawing, sculpture, design, photography, and art history primarily. I grew up in Newark, New Jersey. I attended arts high school. It was the nation's first high school for the arts. It was art and music. For me, it was just the perfect place to be. I went to the School of Visual Arts. It was a wonderful education there. I was fortunate that I had the opportunity at the end of my undergraduate years to study at the University of Copenhagen and study Danish design. It was such a big influence on me. I had never been anywhere. And suddenly I'm in a country that really put such an emphasis, still does put a great emphasis on the arts. Here I am <laughs> in my uh, tangled world of iron, which is really the primary media that I'm using lately. I've worked in all sorts of materials over the course of my life. This is the Red Garage Studio. It's uh, 32 of my steps from my house to the garage. It's like a little compound here. It was my grandfather's place. This is the entrance. I love a wall that I can put things on. I've done that all my life. These are a couple of my sculptures and one of my bronzes. The interior of my shop is crowded, but it's a multi-function shop. And uh, I'm able to do many things in that, including wood, clay, metal. I have a big whiteboard there that I photograph things against. And it's a place where I can sit and figure out what I'm doing. Things in progress. This is very much part of my working process is to really have a number of things going at the same time. And they kind of, I imagine them having some dialogue with one another. One gives an idea to the other, and I try to follow through with it. And some of the work really is quite pre-planned and some of it happens spontaneously when I turn uh, a sculpture around or upside down or I put a, another piece against it. And I think it's very much in the process I like to work. I have rather simple tools and it limits my scale to some degree. Most of my pieces are no bigger than six feet in height, but I'm happy in that scale. I still have dreams of making that big monumental piece that'll go down Storm King, but for now, <laughs> I'm busy formulating ideas. My forge, which is uh, for forming metal, is outdoors. I really must say that I enjoy working in this method that has really a tradition that goes back to the Greeks, you know, in terms of forming things in metal. It's basically heat hammer and a hard surface, and the hard surface is an anvil. That's my anvil, and probably that's my most prized possession. And it is uh, probably over 100 years old, and it's still very fine. My favorite tool, probably a hammer. But then every tool is a hammer, <laughs> or can be. <laughs> you can control metal more than you might imagine. And when metal is heated, it becomes quite pliable and can be formed. And when it cools, it's very rigid. I love to convey the feeling of motion. How often I study nature, I appreciate nature, but I'm fascinated by how things are always in motion. The idea of our earth spinning and you know the whole celestial heaven moving around is something that underlies what I do to some degree. It looks a little crazy and it probably is, but it's organized chaos. It works for me. Unlike a real traditional blacksmith, I join things together with more contemporary welding techniques. So I use gas, I use arc welding to weld pieces together. I also use in this piece that you can see a couple of little rivets where the, the top piece connects with the bottom. And riveting is a more traditional way of joining. And you can also join metals 
in the forge, you heat both pieces up very hot and you join them together by hammering them together with a flux. Drawing is something that I think is so important in any art form. It's where you make an idea real. And I do like drawing from the figure. I have a tendency toward abstraction. One of the things I found is, you know, I'd be working on a sculpture and then suddenly I'd make a slice and I'd say, wow, that yeah, reveals a whole other form. It started to become this wonderful discovery of building up a form and then bisecting it. I keep bees and they're great architects and they often reveal things to me about nature that influence how I see it. Art really does bring us from the universe. It's just passing this energy. I'm so happy you know, that in my life I have art. I've had the opportunity to really work with so many wonderful people, to be inspired. It's something I do whenever I can. I realize that being an artist is really a lifestyle as well as a job. I am very happy to be able to exhibit locally and to get a reaction. If you can enjoy what you're doing, feel that you're doing something that is capturing the feeling that you have in doing it, whether it be visual art or music or writing, art is really for everyone. And it can add great pleasure to your life. It can add great understanding to the world around us uh, through the arts. It was our first language really and continues to be. I mean, art doesn't need a translator. Follow your passion. My father would have been much happier with me as a mechanical engineer, and it wasn't for me. I had some of the other skill sets that may have been good for that, but it's something I can't imagine not doing. This program is made possible in part through the support of New York State Council on the Arts, Orange County Government, Shapiro's Furniture, and from donations from people like you. Please consider making a donation today at www.ocartscouncil.org. Thank you.